continue to Alyssa? As we move into the downsizing, like specifically here with the second brigade, how is that transitioning going to work to minimize the effects of it? Well, I th this drawdown, as difficult as it was, uh, was done in a way I think that probably minimized the negative impacts uh, of downsizing in, in the past, particularly the reinvesting of harvested brigades, the battalions being reseeded into the forces that remain. Thus, uh, the math may be a little bit off here, but the net loss of soldiers leaving uh, Fort Stewart is about 1,900. So that's about half of what a brigade set is, uh, looks like. The other thing, um, with the addition of the fires brigades, engineering, uh, uh, units, I, I think, uh, you know, we better postured ourselves for the future. I mean, the, the mission for every post camp and station is to make sure we have the best possible army going forward. And the lessons of Iraq and Afghanistan taught us very clearly uh, that the three battalion brigade was far more versatile, far more effective. And so I think the remaining uh, brigades here, as they will be across the Army, uh, will be far more uh, useful tools uh, going into the future. The other thing I think it's important uh, for everyone to understand is that uh, Fort Stewart was not singled out. Every multi-brigade uh, post in, in CONUS in the continental United States lost a, a brigade as well. So we tried to be as equitable as we, as we possibly could, um, and, and uh, I think given, given the challenges we faced, we were fairly successful. Uh, downsizing is never easy, and this is something that uh, every post-war period has, has brought. Uh, I think as we discussed in my previous visit a couple of years ago, we saw this coming, uh, but nevertheless, when you go through it, uh, it's a challenge. What I worry about is how far are we going to have to come down uh, beyond this point. Uh, I think it's pretty clear uh, the end strength will continue to decrease somewhat. Um, the concern I and the Chief of Staff have, and I know General Murray and other leaders, if you look at full sequestration as currently planned and as it's currently the law through 2023, uh, our end strength will probably have to come down to about another 400, two 420,000 from uh, the 490 or so that we're, we're, we're working toward right now. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of rough, uh, rough territory ahead, and, uh, but I've got confidence that we can meet those challenges if we're given the time uh, and the opportunity to, to plan for them appropriately. Thank you. Um, you had a chance to visit Fort Stewart. This is your second visit now. What is it that impresses you as you as you go through this this facility here? Well, it's always soldiers, no matter where I go, whether it's into a Afghanistan or uh, any camp, post, or station. And as, as someone who spends the vast majority of my time around a briefing table in the Pentagon, the true joy and uplifting experience to come out here and, and see young soldiers doing incredibly complex things. Uh, the, the Gray Eagle uh, facility I visited, uh, I'm talking to a young man who'd been uh, an engineer and been repairing these things for about a year. Uh, I asked him what you were doing before uh, the past year when you learned this skill. He goes, I was driving a tractor. It, it's just amazing to me to see soldiers of such a young age uh, take on these complex challenges and, and do them expertly. The thing about this facility, and, and one of the things I think that makes it unique, is its high deployability. And we spent some time in the leaders' uh, briefing talking to the uh, Civil Works folks, Corps of Engineers folks, about the uh, widening and, and deepening of the project, the SHEP. Uh, and uh, while that won't immediately affect uh, the deployability, make it any, any more uh, plausible, uh, the fact that that port is here now and available as, as part of a deployment mission uh, is a, a very important one. Uh, and it has all the tools necessary to, to get forward uh, and to go wherever the, the uh, challenge may need it. And, and that's always a, a unique capability and, and uh, as much as anything it's what, what stands this facility apart. 
Dan, for our last question. Um, you know, we talked about the soldiers and how important or a big issue this is for them as far as the army downsizing and, and units uh, deflating and so forth. Uh, but the, the families are just as equally important and stuff like that. So how do you feel? You know, I'm sorry, the what? Their families? Yes. Oh, yeah. and, and how do you feel in your own opinion that this is going to affect them as far as, you know, uh, is it going to disrupt them so much as if them having to relocate or or do you see this as maybe the army kind of looking at uh, homesteading them to where they, even though the units are going to be downsized and so forth, that they won't necessarily have to pick up the families and move? Well, we, we say repeatedly the phrase army family. Um, and, and it's more to us than just the bumper sticker. I mean, truly, if you look at the profile of this force compared to a quarter century or so ago, uh, it is a, a highly family-oriented uh, uh, organization. And we have particularly focused upon the health and welfare and well-being of, of soldiers' families over the last 12 years. We, at the time, took our, our family programs uh, budget and, and just about doubled it from about 600 million to about 1.2 billion. Um, as funding comes down and as our interest rate comes down, the, the uh, money we spend on those programs will be reduced as well, but, but I made it a priority to ensure that uh, we make decisions that recognize fully the importance of maintaining critical family programs and we want to do that. As to uh, you know, disrupting people's lives, uh, uh, I mentioned uh, the half of division roughly, or the half of brigade roughly, that will be staying here uh, reinvested. I mean, those will be soldiers who are currently serving, and so they, they shouldn't have to go through uh, an unexpected uh, change of station. Um, there will be some of that. Uh, we are trying to minimize it. Um, we are trying to keep units together as best we can. Um, but uh, you know, part of being in the United States Army and the United States military is, is uh, PCS, -ing, permanent change of station. Um, it was always a part of the life that most made me wonder how people could do it. I hate to move, and yet uh, it's hard to talk to a teenager in an Army family who hasn't uh, you know, been in four or five different schools. So while they're very good at it, we want to we want to provide them as much stability as we can. We we now that we're out of theater and deployment uh, will will decline significantly, as you're seeing here already. Um, we hope to bring uh, increased stability to to the station decision. So we'll, we'll, that's something we work very hard. Okay. That's it. Okay. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.